The case I'm going to talk about today was so gruesome and traumatic that the details of what happened had to be withheld from the public. It is one of Australia's worst murders, especially for this remote rural town called Greenough in Western Australia. Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you don't know what is going on here, I am a horror artist and I draw what I talk about in the video. I draw what comes to mind and what inspires me by the story I am talking about. This information in this video is what I have found in my research, so don't shoot the messenger, and nothing in this video is meant to be insensitive to the victims or their families. My art might be grating to some people, but if you are sensitive, I recommend leaving my channel right now. You have been warned, and I don't want to hear any whinging. With that being said, let's get on with the video. The Greenough Family Massacre On a remote rural property in Greenough, located 400 kilometres north of Perth in Western Australia, on the 21st of February 1993, a single mother and her three children went to bed as normal. Karen McKenzie, 31 years old, went to sleep on a mattress on the floor in the lounge room and her three children, Daniel, 16, Amara, 7 and Katrina, 5, went to sleep in their rooms. Backtracking to that day before the murders, a farmhand and acquaintance of Karen named William Patrick Mitchell, who was 22 years old, had an afternoon of getting wasted on cannabis, amphetamines and alcohol and a wonderful concoction that was going to not end well especially for someone as deranged as William. Later that evening, allegedly after midnight, William drove around to the Mackenzie's place and pulled up outside. Karen's 16-year-old son heard the noise and got up to see who it was. When he came outside and come face to face with an intoxicated William, William approached Daniel and attacked him with a tomahawk, brutally hacking at him and caving in his skull on the driveway. William then proceeded inside. He saw Karen sleeping on the mattress in the lounge room floor and bludgeoned her to death with the tomahawk, hitting her in the head and hacking into her neck while she slept. Afterwards, he allegedly raped her corpse three times. Then William moved on to the two remaining girls in the house. A seven-year-old Amara was sexually assaulted before hacked to death with the tomahawk and then finally brutally slayed five-year-old Katrina to death in her bed. Their bodies weren't found until a friend turned up at the house and found Daniel's body on the driveway. Being too scared to go inside the home to see what else had happened, he left and rang police. The police turned up, one of them being Sergeant Brian Jones. He walked into the home and what he saw would stay with him forever and some of the homicide detectives vomited on site and struggled with the memories of the case years afterwards. Some officers even left that field of work altogether. After this, a five-week investigation was in tow, but they struggled to find who the murderer was. The only thing that led them to William was a sorbeline cream jar on the floor of one of the bedrooms with a clear fingerprint on it. One of the bedroom doors was taken for forensic analysis back in Perth and a footprint was found on the driveway from one of William's shoes. 72 other people were interviewed and investigated and their fingerprints were taken as well. When they pinned William, he confessed everything. He said he was anticipating on a surprise attack and didn't plan on Daniel being up and investigating who was outside. Apparently Karen had rejected William's advances a few weeks before the murders, but this can only be alleged as the crime didn't seem to be passion driven by the way that Karen's body was slaughtered and the way that a blanket was draped over the top of her head. It was also said and alleged that Karen was also involved with drugs before she died and they may have been doing a deal that sort of went a little bit sour and maybe Karen might not have paid a debt to William for potentially purchasing drugs off of him. But before William was caught, panic went through the state at the thought of someone walking around with an axe killing people as they slept. People couldn't believe that anything like this could happen in a quiet town. 
that was only populated by 300 people. Once DNA was analysed from the crime scene, they knew who did it and five weeks later, William was arrested. Once finally convicted in 1995 and brought to trial, people were outraged and believed that this should have been the reason to bring back the death penalty, but once the trial ended, he was serving four life sentences in prison. William appealed the ruling and got it taken down to a life term with possible parole in 20 years. This is when Karen's sister, Evelyn Clow, knew she was going to fight until her very last day that William never got out of prison. He was eligible in 2013, but it was squashed by Evelyn pleading with the review board and bringing up all the details of the case and what he did. Apparently, William Mitchell was a loner, didn't have a lot of friends, and didn't have the best life living with his five siblings in absolute poverty. Apparently, he spiraled out of control when his mother died when he was just 11 years old. He began falling in with the wrong crowd and doing drugs. I'm sorry, but that is no excuse for what you have done. At the time of the crime, and even to this day, the judge of the case ruled that the way Daniel, Amara and Katrina died, will remain sealed with no details to be released ever, as it was deemed one of the worst crimes in WA. This crime still haunts Greenough today. William is apparently held in a medium security prison called Bunbury Prison, which he was moved to in 2009 from maximum security. Fuck, I would have left him in maximum security, to be honest with you. In 2007, Barbara Marchant, the mother of Karen, was sent a threatening letter she thinks came from William in prison. It read, Found you, bitch. Had someone look for you. Got a photo of your little girl. Short hair, white shirt, and little skirt. Nice. See you when I get out. Service Minister Margaret Quirk confirmed that the letter did not come from William or the prison, but he may have got someone to write it on the outside or it was sent from someone playing a disgusting joke on Barbara. There is some sick pricks out there, that's all I've got to say. A friend of Amara launched a petition in 2013 as well to stop William from ever getting out of prison, and she also got tens of thousands of people signing it, and it was presented to Parliament. As I said before about Evelyn Clow bringing all the details up to the board to make sure this guy never was released, there was also police officers that also came forward to tell them their ordeal and their complete utter trauma from the whole thing. And this was just enough to stop and squash the whole thing. All I can say is that it must be pretty heartbreaking what happened to this family if it's something that can never be released to the public. It must have been absolutely just beyond comprehension so what do you think about this case does anyone out there know someone who lives in Greenough do you, you know do you live in Greenough do you know or used to know the family uh, let me know in the comments below like I have some questions about the house uh, like is anyone still living in it uh, does does anyone live in it did it get sold by the family members? Uh, I did find on a uh, on a website called onthehouse.com. Uh, it was sold in February of 1994 for about $45,000. But that's the last time it changed hands. Who who owns it now? Like who? I, I, I can tell you now, I would never ever set foot in that house. Like that would be a complete... Uh, vortex of terror I reckon but I can't find any history on it I did go and have a look at the house on Google Earth uh, on the maps and that and uh, yeah just to see where it was located and yeah if you go to Google Earth and then bring the drag the little man down to the road so you can have a look at the uh, the actual camera that the car will show you as you as it drives along the road there is actually a part there that is blurred out uh, basically where the driveway is it's beside the driveway so I'm only assuming that maybe you can see the house from there I don't even know if that house is still there I don't even know the property may have 
been sold back in 1994 but that house could have been demolished and they could have built some other stuff up in there I can see some houses up in there um, like quite a few I have no idea what is going on in there probably none of my business but I'm just curious <laughs> that's I just I just want to know some shit that's all it's tragic it's sad so my inspiration for the illustration that I did for this story was basically pinning a creature or, uh, you know, like a hybrid human, which I like to draw, uh, staking them right through the body like a kebab. And I am portraying this being as uh, William himself. And as far as I'm concerned, I think this is even too lenient for him to uh, go through. I've got some of his uh, limbs cut off, one of his legs. Actually, both both legs are cut off. They're tied up by rope. He's got a rope around his neck. Um, he's, as I said before, skewered like a kebab through the center, and you can see see the uh, you know the, the the wooden post through some of the holes, and the in his mouth going straight through the head. And I decided to add four axes four little tomahawk axes to represent the lives each life that he took that this piece of shit took all because you know allegedly i don't know if there was more to the story all because karen rejected his advances like if that's what it was like you've got to be a pretty fucked up human being to do that to someone else all because they did that so as I said before, if you know anything else about this case, please let me know down in the comment section below. If I have missed anything, uh, like I always say, I do comb the internet for all the information and then I sift through it and then I, you know, write a script down. If anyone in that area knows anything more, let me know, please. I get so invested in these cases and so caught up in these cases and I do spend quite a few hours just going through the internet trying to find as much as I can. Also, if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. Hit the notifications that informs you every time that I upload so you stay up to date with what I am doing. You know, I mix it up, I'll bring you some alien stories, I'll bring you true crime, I'll bring you some scary facts, conspiracies, all that sort of stuff. All the stuff that I'm absolutely interested in, I absolutely love it. You will find me on a weekends just sifting through the documentaries on Amazon Prime or other streaming services just so I can just see how crazy and how completely fucked up this world really is and then i like to draw about it and bring it to you guys but anyway that is enough of me rambling i'll leave you with what is left of this video if you want to watch and see how this illustration turned out completely and i will see you guys in the next one bye